The following content is based on real events that occurred in UK academia. UK lecturer involved in near-miss IP theft incident. A lecturer who developed an innovative solution for disposing of radioactive waste was able to protect themselves from serious repercussions, including reputational damage, following overseas interest in their dual-use research. The lecturer specializes in nuclear energy and was approached by an overseas company to create a university spin-out. The lecturer sought approval for travel expenses to visit the company and discuss terms. The lecturer identified that the potential collaboration fell outside the scope of a mandatory notification under the National Security and Investment Act. However, recognizing the wide-ranging civilian and military uses of nuclear energy, the lecturer's head of department recommended detailed research into the overseas company and referred the matter to the university's research security team and the Technology Transfer Office. The lecturer provided the research security team with a detailed specification of their product, which enabled them to determine that the product included components listed on the UK government's consolidated list of strategic, military and dual-use items, which would require an export license. Further open-source research also revealed that the overseas company had a concerning history of IP theft disputes. Given these findings and the potential for dual-use applications, the research security team escalated the collaboration to the Research Risk Review Board. The board decided to voluntarily notify the UK government of the potential collaboration under the NSI Act, considering the nature of the product and the overseas company's background. As a precaution, the head of department advised the lecturer not to travel overseas until the review was completed ensuring all legal obligations were met and the lecturer's intellectual property was safeguarded. What can we learn from the UK lecturer's story? The absence of a requirement for a mandatory notification under the NSI Act does not mean that a collaboration is low risk. Thorough due diligence should still be undertaken and all legal obligations fulfilled. If the lecturer had travelled to visit the overseas company and presented the product without an export licence, they would have been in breach of export control regulations, committing a criminal offence punishable by fines or up to 10 years imprisonment. The theft of IP can result in a loss of competitive edge, reputational damage, a slowdown in research progress or business growth, and a loss of trust from partners and funders. If the IP is dual-use or sensitive, it can also negatively impact the UK's national security. Institutions should identify and protect their most sensitive and valuable IP through measures like patents, cyber security, non-disclosure agreements, selective sharing, IP ownership agreements, restricted physical and network access and clear international collaboration policies. IP ownership agreements should include identification and notification of arising IP, protection decisions, management of IP, commercialization and use of IP, termination agreement, background and foreground IP, jurisdiction and governing law, where information is stored, and allowances and limitations of usage of IP. The Trusted Research Countries and Conferences guidance provides additional advice on steps to take before travelling overseas. What did the UK institution do to reach this positive outcome? The lecturer followed internal processes and sought approval from their head of department for travel expenses prior to travelling overseas. The head of department recognised the need to refer the potential collaboration to the research security team and the technology transfer office due to the subject matter of nuclear energy and the product's potential dual use. The lecturer worked collaboratively with the research security team, providing them with the necessary technical information to establish whether an export license would be required. The research security team conducted thorough due diligence and made the decision to escalate the potential collaboration to the Research Risk Review Board. The university's Research Risk Review Board was aware of their ability to voluntarily notify the government about the acquisition under the National Security and Investment Act.
Need more information? Speak to your research office or professional services and visit the NPSA Trusted Research website.